Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm an educator at the Missouri History Museum. Thanks for joining us today for our April Homeschool Day STEAM in Forest Park. This gallery stop looks at why we have parks, how the uses of parks have changed over time, and how parks are being used to promote health of people and ecosystems today. Parks are home to celebrations big and small, sporting events, sled rides, morning jogs, bicycle rides, bird watching, nature hikes, and much, much more. People use parks for so many reasons. And so it may be funny to ask, why do we have parks in the first place? Throughout history, people have created parks for many different reasons. People have argued that parks provide all kinds of benefits, from fresh air for us to breathe, to places for us to play. In a second, I'm gonna have you pause and I want you to think about the following questions. Do you have a park that you like to go to? Why do you like to go there? What are some things that you see people doing when you're there? I know for me, I love going to Benton Park. I see people fishing, I get to look at the ducks and the geese, I see people walking their dogs, and I've even seen people doing yoga outside. So many different things at this one park. So go ahead, pause now, and think about those questions. Another park that I love to visit in St. Louis is Forest Park. In fact, the Missouri History Museum is actually located right here in Forest Park, which makes it so easy for me to go on walks throughout the day or after I finish work. Forest Park is the biggest park in St. Louis at 1,371 acres, and an acre is about the size of a football field, so you can imagine it's really big. Forest Park is bigger than Central Park in New York, Grant Park in Chicago, and the Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. So parks have been created for many different reasons, and it's hard to say just how much Forest Park has meant to the city of St. Louis. When it opened in 1876, Forest Park fit into the common idea of the time that a park was supposed to be a pleasure ground. Pleasure ground parks were often large parks located at the edges of cities. So at this point, St. Louis hadn't grown a lot. It was still rural in this area. So it was far away from where everyday people could use them. Because they were far away from where most people lived, it was expensive to ride out here to come and use the park. And remember, people didn't have cars back then. Because it was so expensive to get out here, these parks were mostly used by rich people who liked to race their carriages there on the nice roads inside the park. In the early 1900s, there was a push to make parks more accessible to the everyday people. Many people thought it would be a good idea to provide parks closer to where people actually lived. This made parks accessible to working class people who lived in urban neighborhoods. In St. Louis, Charlotte Rumbold, was a champion of playgrounds and reforming parks to make them more accessible for children. In 1907, Rumble became the first superintendent of the Public Recreation Commission, a division of the Parks Department. She focused her attention on the living conditions of the poor and was an advocate for health and recreation services. In her eight years as the city's recreation supervisor, Rumble opened 19 new playgrounds. She believed that no child under 14 should have to walk more than a half a mile to find a place to play. Another important figure in the history of St. Louis parks is Dwight Davis. Davis was a professional tennis player, director of parks in St. Louis, and eventually the Secretary of War for the United States. Davis was a big advocate for using parks for outdoor recreation. Before Davis, those in St. Louis often weren't allowed to walk on the grass in many city parks. Davis had all of the keep off the grass signs removed from city parks and pushed for more recreational opportunities in the city's parks. Throughout the mid 1900s, the city of St. Louis also opened up many recreation centers in city's parks. These indoor recreation centers still operate today and have swimming pools, basketball courts, boxing rings, and exercise equipment available for those that live in the city. Today, there is a big movement to get people back outside using parks. Many people have started to realize the importance of being outside for our health during this pandemic when many of us have been cooped up inside and need to get outside to have some time to move around. A study published in Nature's Scientific Reports in 2019 found that out of the 20,000 participants, they were significantly more likely to report good health and well being when they spent at least two hours a week in nature. The health benefits peaked at around 200 to 300 minutes a week, but anything less than two hours didn't make a difference. 
Pediatricians at the UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital in Oakland, California, have become so concerned about the lack of nature in their urban patients' lives that they write prescriptions for it. In clinical trials, they found that every park visit decreased parents' stress and increased children's resilience. Thank you so much for learning with Forest Park Forever and the Missouri Historical Society for our April Virtual Homeschool and Learning Day. You can learn more by watching our other Gallery Stop videos and exploring our other Learning Day activities. You can also learn more by visiting our website at mohistory.org and Forest Park Forever site at forestparkforever.org. You can find the links to those in the description below. Remember to please share with us anything you created on social media or any thoughts you might have by tagging us and adding hashtag MHSLearn. And remember, keep making history.